Hey, what's up everyone? Chip Waters here for another Blender tutorial, and this time we're going to talk about materials. So, some of you may be asking about my new interface. I'm using it because I like the way it displays things in the node editor, which we will get to in a different tutorial. Just to let you know, the way I got this was I go to user preferences, one of the themes, and go to the presets, and I'm using the flatty light preset. I will go back in, and the one thing I will change on the 3d view tab i'll come in as i've done before and change the outline width to three the vertex size to five so then i save the user settings and we're good so now if i come in tab out you see my outline width is a little bit larger so i like this new preset one of the interesting things about blender is it has a very familiar material paradigm very much like sketchup and let me show you what i'm talking about switch over to sketch up here and you can see we have our box here and if I double click on it now we're inside the box right so if you think about it in blender this would be the same thing as being in edit mode so I'm gonna go back out at this at this point I can actually assign a material to the whole box I've made that whole box red but if I want to I can double click go in and individually assign different materials to different parts of the box blender does the same thing let's take a look okay here we are back in blender and I'm going to go over here and I'm going to choose this material mode. So now we can see roughly some of the materials that are on this. So let's talk about these materials. As we select objects, you'll see that this material tab right here changes and it shows what materials are applied to each object. So in this case, we have a glossy plastic. In this case, we have painted metal. And in this case, we have cement floor shiny. So this area up here is designated for whatever object is being selected. If you want to apply another material to an object, you select it and you go down here. And in here, you can find the different materials that you have resident in your blend file. And currently I've got just these materials resident. So I'm going to tap on wood floor shiny and I've, and I've changed this object to be the wood floor shiny material. So let's see how we apply a new material inside the object and to an object face. Let's tab into the object. Now we're in edit mode. We select a face. And what I'm gonna do is over here, this is the object material list. I'm gonna add a new material. This is called adding a slot in the material list. Once I've done that, I'm gonna choose a material. Let's use the cement floor shiny material and then hit the assign button and it changes over here. Now I come over here and I tab out shift Z and we'll render and you'll see that now we have this material on this face. So it's very much like SketchUp we showed before where you can actually apply materials to the overall object and you can apply materials to faces in the object. Obviously removing a material from a face in the object is as simple as hitting the minus key and removing the slot for that material the main material or the object material will now take the place of what used to be the face material. So how do we remove a material from an object? Shift Z to get out of the render mode and let's select our object. And all we do is we hit up here, we hit this minus button right here. Now we have no material on this object. And to assign one again, we can go through here. But what if we want to create a new material? Well, we hit this new button and I'm going to call this blue gloss and with that I need to choose a surface which is going to be this diffuse BSDF or I could go to something like glossy BSDF and I can choose a color and so let's choose a nice blue color now let's also add that to the material ball as well go up here and we'll use the blue gloss to that as well shift Z to go into the rendering and you can see the blue gloss material now one of the things about this particular glossy BSDF is it's really pretty crappy and I'm going to show you how we can fix that here shift Z to come back out so I'm going to edit this and instead of using the glossy BSDF we want to use the principled BSDF shader now there's a lot to this particular shader but in particular the thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to change to the blue color again to like a blue color and then under roughness we'll just add just a tiny tiny little bit of roughness just that much when i hit the render button shift z you'll see that it looks much more realistic let's say i want to duplicate this color and make a bright green plastic material so the way i can do that is i can just with this blue gloss highlighted and my object highlighted i can just go over here and hit this plus button now i'm creating a new material which is blue gloss 001 i've assigned it now to this material ball and i'm going to call this green gloss and with that selected i'll come over here and i'll select green and in this particular case let's change it to green matte and let's go back into roughness and let's move it up and actually i can go into the shift z mode and i can and i can adjust the roughness for this object 
and I can make it as high or as low as I want. So I'll, let's make it right about there. So that's how we'll leave it. Let's talk about the principled shader. In order to understand all of these settings that you're looking at here, I'm going to ask you to look at a different video because other people have already gone through this and explained it quite well. In particular, Andrew Price has already done a video on the new principled BSDF shader. It's worth watching and I think you'll get a lot out of it and understand better how the shader works. We're going to take on the node editor here in a new video soon, but this will get you started. Okay, here I've applied the blue gloss to both objects and we are no longer using the green in this project. So I'm going to save this project. I'm going to put it in this matte demo folder. Save it. Now I will open it and I'm going to go back in to the materials. And you're going to notice that my green material is now missing what happened. So just like SketchUp, Blender purges materials that aren't being used. The difference being that Blender does it automatically, whereas SketchUp does it on demand. We'll render again. And notice we only have two materials being used. So why did it not purge all the rest of these materials? Well, let's take a look. I'm going to select something like the Chrome Scratch material. And you'll notice this number two. That means there's two objects using this material. I only see one. Well, the other one is this F. F stands for fake user. So if we know we have a material that we want to save with the file, we're going to want to make sure we do that. So let's take a look how we do this. Let's go back over into our blue gloss and let's say, hey, we want to save that blue gloss with the file. So I'm going to tap the F button. I'm going to go into this cube and I'm going to choose something else, maybe a glass material. Notice F is already set on glass because we put fake user on every material that we want to make sure that we store inside of our blend file. So now I'm going to save. All right, now I'm going to open file we just saved and let's go in and look and even though we didn't have blue gloss on any object in the scene it is now still saved and the reason for that is because we have the F button set on it. So how do you save material files? Well in fact in Blender you can't save material files you have to save them in a Blender file and this can create problems because Blender files link to the different images that you may use for your materials. And typically those are absolute links, which means that if you give someone else your blend file or you change the structure of your directory, you may unlink those files and then lose your material file. So let's talk about how to keep that from happening. Here I'm showing the directory where we save this demo blend file. And you notice it's roughly 6,000 kilobytes. So it's not that large. I know for a fact I have many large textures in this file that are being used by the materials. What I want to do is I want to store those textures with the blend file. And here's how we do this. Now that we save this, and remember that it's roughly six megabytes. I'm gonna go under file and under external data, I'm gonna say pack all into blend. And when I've done that, it says packed 12 files right up here. Once we've packed them, we need to save the file. So we'll do that right now. And we'll go back to the folder. And now look, the file is now almost 25 megabytes. So all of those textures are now packed inside of the blend file. So what if you're like me and you like using the shortcut control shift S plus key on the numpad to increment enter. So what I just did is I just saved a new version of the scene I'm looking at and I've incremented it by one. So let's take a look at that file structure. So notice here that the file is matdemo onebland And if I keep doing this, I'll end up with two and three and four. It automatically increments. But the problem is I'm storing all these files together. All of these texture files are being stored with the blend file, which I may not want. So I want to actually unpack. Once I've packed them, I may want to actually unpack them in a way that is easy for me to reconcile those files at a later date. Let's see how we can do that. So what I'll do then is I'll go into file, external data, unpack all into files, and then I can say use files in current directory to create when necessary. So I'm going to hit this button and it saved the pack files to this particular directory. Let's go take a look at them. Here they are, the textures files. And these are all the files that we had for that particular blend file. Now, when I save the file, file, save, we can see that the new file saved right here is now back to just under seven megabytes. And now when I incrementally save this blend file, it'll continue to stay small and won't include all of the textures. Lastly, I wanna go over exactly how you import materials from other blend files. So let's do that. We'll go under file, 
and we'll go into append and now we're going to look for another file material scene 7 and here are all the things that we can import from that blend file and we're going to go into materials and you can see we have this material thread plate we'll take that one and we'll pen that from library and now I'm going to check this plane right here and I'm going to go and grab the material metal thread plate bare and shift Z and you'll see we were able to successfully import from another blend file into this file and I'm probably going to want to tap this fake user button just to make sure I don't lose it from this file so that covers it for this particular tutorial thanks for watching